So, welcome to GSA 101. My name is Nick Kovalt, and I am the director of the Governor's School for the Arts, and it's my pleasure to welcome you today. Um, in this presentation, we're gonna review what Kentucky's Governor's School for the Arts, or GSA, is all about. We'll dis also discuss what types of students we're looking for and provide an overview of the application process. Additional virtual information sessions that dig further into the application process are going to be held throughout the fall, so be sure to stay tuned to GSA's website and social media channels for continued updates. You can actually go ahead and register for all of our other virtual info sessions um, throughout the fall on our website. Today's session is being live streamed on Facebook and it's being recorded. The recording will be made publicly available in the coming days. Uh, we'll have some time for Q&A at the end of the presentation today, so feel free to enter your questions as you have them. Um, using the Q&A feature here in Zoom. So um, uh, you'll see that Q&A feature down there. I, I see that you all can raise your hand. It's a little difficult for me to interact with that feature, but if you can just put your questions in the Q&A feature and in the chat feature, um, we will um, be able to uh, interact with you there. Okay. Um, if you are uh, watching this on Facebook, I'll try to keep an eye on that stream as well to see if you have any questions. It's a little more difficult for me to do that, but I'll try and keep an eye on it. Um, and if you're attending this in real time via Zoom, you're going to receive a survey after the presentation. So please complete that survey. Uh, your responses really help us um, best assess our recruitment efforts and make sure we're reaching everyone across the state. So as we dive into today's presentation, I'd love to start by telling you just a little bit about myself. So this is a picture of me around the time that I was applying to GSA. Um, in some ways, I felt that I was a fairly normal teenager, um, but I was also definitely a self-certified music nerd. Uh, I knew I was really into singing and that my favorite way to spend time was in a choir or listening to music. And I was definitely the only one of my friend group that would willingly turn on the classical radio station in hopes that I could hear some opera. But beyond that, I, I didn't really know where to begin when it came to pursuing music. My parents had heard about GSA through a friend and I decided to give it a go. And while I was fortunate enough to be able to get some private voice lessons while I prepared my audition, applying for GSA felt like an entirely new type of journey to me. So ultimately, I was accepted into the program for vocal music and eventually I went on to be an intern at the summer program and now I'm the director. But it all started with a navigation of the GSA application and the audition process. All this to say, if you can't get enough of your art form but feel daunted by the idea of applying to a program like GSA, you are not alone. I and the entire GSA team are very passionate about ensuring our applicants feel informed, supported, and resourced throughout this process. So first things first, what is GSA? Put simply, the Governor's School for the Arts is a community of artists that empowers Kentucky's next generation of creative leaders. The primary way we accomplish this, and the reason you're likely watching this video, is GSA's summer program. GSA's summer program is a three-week residential program for high school age artists that takes place on a college campus. Students are immersed in an intense, challenging, and exhilarating learning environment in one of nine art forms. And while each student focuses on the one art form that they are attending GSA for, interdisciplinary collaboration is a major component of the program, meaning students are also exposed to and engage with art forms other than their own. So as I mentioned, GSA has nine core art forms. So let's just go through those real quick. First, architecture and design, then creative writing, dance, and our dance program is based in ballet, modern, and choreography or composition, drama, film and photography, instrumental music, and that's all types of instruments, musical theater, visual art, and vocal music. So our vocal music program is a bit more classically based than our musical theater program. Also, we have a choir program within vocal music. Best of all, all of this is provided at no cost to the students. GSA does not charge tuition, room or board, or any other fees for attending the program. Keeping the program tuition-free has been an important part of our mission since GSA was founded in 1987 as a partnership between the Commonwealth of Kentucky and Kentucky Performing Arts, a nonprofit in Louisville with a statewide mission, formerly known as the Kentucky Center for the Performing Arts. Before we dive further into what the summer program looks like, let's talk about GSA's values. What do we believe in? What's important to us? 
First of all, we believe artists are vitally important to society. If you're watching this, chances are that means you. You are important. You are an artist, and artists make vital contributions to our society. They innovate, problem solve, inspire. Artists spark empathy, joy, social dialogue, and human connection. GSA's role is to connect young artists with affirmation, empowerment, resources, and quality educational opportunities toward a future where they can be the best version of their creative selves. And we know that behind every young artist is a network of support from educators, mentors, families, and friends. So if you are watching this as a guardian, teacher, or just a cheerleader for a young artist, GSA is here for you too. Your support and mentorship of young artists is vitally important, so thank you for being an arts hero. In all things GSA, you can expect to encounter the following values. First off, GSA is uplifting. We believe each of us is capable and deserving of a bright and abundant future. GSA is open and communicative. We celebrate the differences between us, and we also seek out the commonalities that we might not have realized we share. GSA is a community. We live, learn, and grow together as many individuals contributing to something greater than the sum of our parts. GSA is trust and integrity because without accountability to each other and honoring our commitments to each other, we can't access the next three values, authenticity, vulnerability, and resilience. At GSA, we dare to be our true and best selves, embracing our quirks, growing by way of being challenged, courageously sharing our unique voices with the world, and celebrating each person's endless worth, value, and potential. GSA is also about Kentucky love. With students coming from all corners of the Commonwealth, we discover the cultural richness of our state, and we develop our roles in creating the future we want for our home. And of course, GSA is about creativity and innovation. We are artists. We flip the script, we pivot, we design a brighter tomorrow, and we bring color to everyday life. So that's who we are, but what kind of students are we seeking to join the GSA summer program? To be eligible for next summer's summer program, you must currently be a high school sophomore or junior in Kentucky. If you're not quite old enough to apply for GSA yet, keep watching this video. You can start preparing yourself to be a competitive GSA applicant years in advance. It may come as no surprise that GSA is also looking for students who exhibit skill in their art form. We want to ensure every GSA student is up to the challenge of an intense three-week experience in their artistic discipline. However, don't be discouraged if you haven't received a lot of formal training or if you feel like you don't measure up to other young artists in the state for one reason or another. Just as much as we are looking for proven artistic skill, we are also looking for artistic potential. Plus, the, way you the only way you guarantee you won't get into GSA is by not applying. The application process is, is designed to help prepare you for future opportunities, like college applications. So it's a learning experience no matter what. And remember, everyone at GSA, including the adjudicators who score your application, are cheering you on. We want you to do well and we recognize the ambition and courage it takes to submit your application. So go for it, put yourself out there. Equally as important, GSA looks for students who are passionate about their art form. We aren't just interested in what you create, but why you create it. Think about what you want to accomplish through your creativity. Do you want to make other people smile? Do you want to spark change? At GSA summer program, we live, breathe, and eat art. So we're looking for students who exhibit the type of passion it takes to dive into an opportunity like this one. We're also looking for students who exhibit an ability to collaborate with an open mind. GSA summer program is a diverse group of Kentuckians of different identities, perspectives, and walks of life. Students are expected to not only live with people different from themselves, but to learn from them and create with them. Together, we co-create a powerful, unique, and amazing community that is larger than, but dependent upon, our individual contributions. And of course, we're looking for students who are eager to learn. GSA is designed to challenge you, to present you with new methods, ideas, and concepts. So we're looking for students who are excited to keep growing. We know sometimes it can feel uncomfortable to be challenged, but that's where the trust and support of GSA come into play. We all learn and grow together. It's also worth emphasizing that GSA seeks and welcomes applicants of all backgrounds and identities. This means we seek young artists from across the spectrum of, and at the intersections of, things like race, gender identity, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, 
hometown setting, mental and physical health or ability, language, religious belief, political leaning, or cultural background. Translations of our materials are available upon request, and while the GSA application is online, students without access to reliable internet can contact us to discuss how we can accommodate their application regardless. All in all, we seek a student body that represents the richly diverse life experiences and perspectives of Kentucky, because a very profound way to grow is for all of us to learn from people who are different than ourselves. All right, so we're gonna jump into the summer program here in just a moment. I'm just checking the chat feature to see what y'all are up to. I love it. Wow, look at those creative emojis y'all got going on. There, you are artists indeed. <laughs> okay, all right. So let's dig a little further into the summer program. What's it like? How will you spend your time? Do students actually have to do their own laundry? <laughs> On the first day of the program, students move into their residential hall and attend an opening ceremony with their guardians. Then it's time to say goodbye to your family for three entire weeks. That's right, once guardians leave campus on opening day, there is no visitation for the entire duration of the program. For some of you, that might be exciting news, and for others, that might sound a little scary. But fear not. Throughout GSA, you will be surrounded by compassionate residential staff faculty, and a mental health counselor to help you cope with any stress or homesickness that might arise. Students aren't allowed to have their cell phones outside their dorm room, but you can always call your family and friends at the end of the day. <clears throat> On the second day of the program, we hit the ground running. Each day begins with a provided breakfast, followed by a morning session attended by the entire school. The morning sessions include performances, presentations, and Q&As with artists from a variety of fields and careers. It's a great way to learn about other art forms, and you might even discover careers in the arts you never knew existed. Then it's off to class, or as we call it at GSA, studio time. Studio time can consist of many different activities that vary based on your art form of focus. Classes, workshops, rehearsals, demonstrations, field trips, independent work time, and more. You will also receive personalized training from a variety of experts in your field, developing mentorships that can last a lifetime. After three hours of morning studio, we break for lunch. The afternoon consists of a four hour studio period before heading to dinner. Then in the evening, you guessed it, we head back to studio. Well, most nights anyway. Um, some evenings consist of an all school assembly featuring a performance or a presentation that's more fully produced in the morning session. Either way, students are occupied until 10 p.m. when they finally return to the residential hall. While GSA studio takes place seven days a week, we start one hour later on Saturdays, and students have free time on Sundays until afternoon studio. Transportation to houses of worship can be arranged uh, can be arranged for students by GSA staff. There are only two days without studio. The first day without studio usually falls on or around the 4th of July, when we observe the holiday with rest and fun activities in the dorm. The second day without studio is an all-day, all-school field trip to Louisville, where we visit cultural gems like the Kentucky Center for the Performing Arts, the Speed Art Museum, and Kentucky Shakespeare. Back in the dorm, students experience a rich residential life program. Each student is assigned to a residential advisor, or RA for short. You can think of your RA as a sort of GSA mom or dad. They also live in the dorm and serve as mentors who support your ability to have a successful and fun GSA experience. Each student is a member of their RA's group, which consists of other GSA students from different art forms in various parts of the state. You can think of the other students in your RA group as your GSA siblings. And while you can spend plenty of time socializing outside your RA group, there are a cohort of fellow young artists who you'll have regular communication and bonding time with. GSA students tend to develop friendships at the program that last a lifetime. After all, in our everyday life at home, being an artist can often set us apart from, every, from everyone else. But at GSA, it's what we have in common, and that can create a really special type of bond. Even though so much of GSA is spent in studio, RAs organize a variety of fun activities for students outside of class time. These can include exercise and sports groups, crafts, skill building workshops, talent shows, and a 4th of July celebration featuring plenty of fun, like a volleyball tournament, a school dance, or just an opportunity to have a lazy day in your dorm room. The GSA summer program takes place on the beautiful campus of the University of Kentucky, located in Lexington. Students live in Holmes Hall, UK's fine arts residential hall that features not only state-of-the-art student living spaces, 
but also a dance studio, writing lab, art studio, and practice rooms. Each GSA student is assigned a roommate from a different art form in a different county. Students share a two bedroom suite, meaning each student shares a bathroom and living space with one other person, but each student has their own individual bedroom. Room layouts for Holmes Hall are available on the University of Kentucky's website if you'd like to learn more. Floors are assigned by gender, and we work with non-binary and transgender students to ensure that they have a customized housing situation that is comfortable for them. Beyond Holmes Hall, students experience the wide array of stunning facilities at UK, including Meals and Champions Kitchen, located within the newly built Student Center, as well as the School of Arts and Visual Studies, the Singletary Center for the Arts, the Fine Arts Building, and the Schmidt Local Arts Center. Throughout their time on campus, students are held to a high code of conduct agreed upon prior to the summer program. Oh, and yes, you do have to do your own laundry. GSA is a great lesson in independence and self-sufficiency. And on the final day of the program, family and friends are invited back on campus for a day of creative celebration. All students showcase their work in some fashion. The day is full of performances, readings, and gallery exhibitions. The day concludes with a graduation ceremony, and then everyone heads home for some well-deserved rest. <clears throat> but the GSA experience doesn't end after the summer program. GSA has a lifelong commitment to our alumni, supporting them toward a quality and accessible college experience, and championing them as creative citizens for decades to come. GSA alumni receive scholarships to nearly 30 colleges and universities across the country. A full listing of these scholarships is available in the alumni section of our website. GSA alumni also receive significant college and career coaching by way of a college fair during the summer program, as well as an exclusive opportunity to meet with college reps during our fall college and career day event, and through continued mentorships with GSA faculty and staff. GSA alumni are also eligible to apply for our Toyota Alumni Fund, which provides $10,000 a year in grant funding to support alumni artistic development. And of course, students are connected to over 6,000 other GSA alumni who are creating exciting work in a variety of fields across the globe. So now let's talk about the elephant in every room this year. <clears throat> what if we have to go virtual? What if the 2021 summer program can't take place in person due to safety protocols related to COVID-19? Well, it's true that there are many unknowns about the coming year, including what we will learn about how to safely convene people in the studio settings that traditionally accommodate arts learning. Nothing is more important to GSA than the safety of our students, staff, and faculty. And we also want to ensure the best possible learning experience. While we can't yet predict whether GSA 2021 will be in person or fully virtual or some mix of the two, we do have a very good foundation for success either way. In the wake of COVID-19, this past summer's 2020 program went fully virtual. And while it may be mind boggling to think about building a community of artists across nine art forms online, there was no one better suited for this challenge than a bunch of artists. By showing up as our full selves, committing to each other, and leading with a healthy mix of grace, accountability, patience, and creativity, we had a wonderful three-week experience. When asked how they felt after their GSA experience, the class of 2020 had the following to say, 92% feel more prepared for college, 96% found their classwork engaging and, and interesting, 89% felt a sense of belonging to the GSA community and family, 99% interacted with people different from themselves, and 90% considered the virtual experience transformative. We also experienced some thrilling visits from all stars like Kevin Lusula, who's a member of the Grammy award-winning acapella group Pentatonix and also a GSA alum, as well as Governor Andy Bashir. Hopefully all of this proves that when you put a bunch of artists together who are determined to grow, learn, and create, anything is possible, even through a computer screen. Even if the 2021 summer program has to be fully virtual, it may look different than this year's. We'll build upon our learnings no matter what, but we are also confident in our ability to host an exciting program in 2021, regardless of what the next few months holds for society. <clears throat> so hopefully by now we have you on the edge of your seat saying to yourself, GSA sounds like the perfect program for me. How can I apply? Well, you are in the right place. Let's chat about the application process after I have a quick sip of water. <clears throat> All right. I'm gonna check on that chat feature real quick. Oh, I love how talkative you all are. All right. 
Here we go. Let's talk about the application process. I'm hydrated. <laughs> First off, some big picture highlights of the application review process. Every applicant must complete an online application to be considered for GSA 2021. As we mentioned earlier, students without reliable internet access are encouraged to contact us about accommodations. The entire application process for GSA from start to finish includes two rounds. The first round is completely virtual. Every student who submits an application will be considered in this first virtual round. We'll come back to the details of the initial round of the application process in just a bit, but let's first review a timeline for the entire overall process. The initial online application, which will be available in about one month, is due by January 10th. We recommend turning in your application at least one week early to avoid inevitable web, web traffic on the application portal in the couple days prior to the application time deadline. On February 19th, applicants learn whether they've advanced on to the second and final round of the application process. Those who do are deemed GSA finalists. There's no pre-calculated number of finalists, although generally about half of the applicants have been ported on in previous years. The second and final round will include an in-person audition or review at the University of Kentucky on either March 19th or 20th. While it will be a while before you know if you've advanced to the final round, we recommend you mark those dates in your calendar with light pencil. Plans are being made to accommodate the final round virtually if we are unable to convene in person. In that case, if the final round needs to be virtual, finalists will be updated on what's required of them in a virtual version of the final round when they learn of their designation as a finalist. Finally, we make the big announcement on April 16th when we release the list of accepted students for GSA 2021, as well as a waiting list of alternates. Based on current capacity and funding, we anticipate being able to accept 256 students into the 2021 summer program. Broken down per art form, Class sizes range from 12, which is our class size for film and photography and architecture and design, up to 50, which is our class size for instrumental music. But most art forms have about 20 or 30 something students in the class. These class sizes are generally based on the ratio of applicants we see per art form in the applicant pool. There's no pre-calculated amount of alternates, although every summer we end up inviting some alternates to attend as some students on the original accepted list choose to pursue other opportunities during the summer. <clears throat> Throughout the entire process, we will never ask you for your GPA, SAT, or ACT scores. While we know these are commonly used indicators of student success, we understand artists often learn differently than the average student, and as such, we seek out other indicators of your fit for the GSA program. Students can apply for up to two art forms, as we know artists are often multidisciplinary. Uh, instrumentalists, you can apply on two different instruments if you desire, but that will count as your two art forms and you will not be able to submit a third application. There is a $30 application fee collected just before submitting your application. The, the fee increases to $35 total if you apply for two art forms. Students on free or reduced lunch can have this fee completely waived by the click of a button in the application, no questions asked. While we seek a diverse student body from across the entire state, there are no demographic acceptance quotas for GSA. This means we don't accept a certain number of students from each county or high school, nor do we seek specific quotas for gender, race, age, grading school, and so on. In lieu of quotas, GSA adjudicators review each applicant in the context of their work, their potential, their access to resources, and the identities and perspectives they have to offer. Ultimately, adjudicators balance these considerations with their mandate to value all kinds of diversity in the selection process, to choose a GSA class that is prepared for the summer program experience and represents a vast array of Kentucky narratives, communities, and identities. You may be aware that GSA is one of three amazing governor's school programs in Kentucky, the other two being the Governor's Scholar Program, or GSP, and the Governor's School for Entrepreneurs. Both GSP and GSE are awesome programs, and while all three of us are residential summer programs for talented high schoolers, note that our application processes are very different. A lot of people are especially familiar with GSP's application process because it significantly relies on the involvement of a student's high school. Take note that, overall, GSA's application process has less formal involvement from applicants' schools than GSP's, and a student can apply for GSA without any kind of approval from their school. Schools do not nominate students for GSA, and while we encourage students to consult with their teachers and counselors during the application process, it's possible that their role in the application will be limited to the recommendation forms, which we're gonna talk about more in just a moment. 
Okay, so let's go back to the first round of the application process and review some details about the online application that, again, everyone needs to submit by January 10th to be considered for GSA 2021. First things first, everything you need to know about GSA, including the link to access the application, will be found at our website, KentuckyGSA.org. Generally speaking, everything you need for the application will be in the section titled Prospective Students, Parents, Educators. Note that our website is embedded within the larger site for Kentucky Performing Arts, which manages performing arts spaces in Louisville. So if you accidentally click a link that takes you to a page about shows or tickets, just go back to the previous page or go back to our homepage, again, KentuckyGSA.org. On our website, you will find a very important document for your art form called an applicant guide. There are nine applicant guides in total, one for each art form. Now, I cannot emphasize this next point enough. Read the applicant guide for your art form in full before you start your application and consult it often throughout your application process. This year's applicant guides will be made available on October 14th, although you can go ahead and access last year's guides on our website and peruse them to get a sense of the, doc the document's content. The applicant guide should be your one-stop shop for all information you will need during the application process. The applicant guide includes a description of your art form's curriculum during the summer program, an overview of what you'll need to submit in the online application, an overview of what you'll be asked to submit in the final round if you advance, as well as the criteria your application will be scored on. We also include a list of tips from the adjudicators. If you have lingering questions after reading the applicant guide, check out GSA's frequently asked questions on our website or contact GSA staff with a question. We'll provide our contact info at the end of this webinar. Once the applicant guides are released this year, we will host another webinar where we walk through an applicant guide um, on Thursday, October 15th at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Central. We hope to see you there, but a recording of the webinar will be publicly available afterward if you're unable to attend. So, as you dig into the applicant guide, here's an overview of what you're going to learn every applicant has to submit as part of their initial GSA application. So we're going to go into a bit more detail here. The application for GSA 2021 is going to be available by November 4th. I'm hoping to have it out a little bit before then, but definitely by November 4th. It is due by end of day, January 10th. You can start and stop the application as you please, saving your work along the way. So we encourage you to start it as soon as you can and just get it in by January 10th. When you click the Apply Now button on GSA's website, you will be moved to a new page on GSA's application portal called Accepted which is a widely used application program for various art schools. You'll create a pro profile with Accepted and then proceed with your application. Accepted has their own technology support team and you can contact them if you experience technology glitches. And just as a note, Accepted is not misspelled on this slide. The final E in the word is omitted in the application platform's name. Students will be asked for some basic demographic and contact information and then will be asked to identify two recommenders. Applicants provide contact information for each recommender and then accepted emails each rec recommender an online form to fill out. So you never have to submit a letter of recommendation or turn anything in on behalf of your recommenders. We strongly recommend you complete this part of the application process early as possible so your recommenders have time to complete the form before the January 10th deadline. Be sure to notify your recommenders so that they can be on the lookout for the forms and so you can ensure the recommender feels prepared to describe your attributes as best as possible. So we're going to go into a bit more detail about who these recommenders are. The first recommender, or your school administrator recommender, should be someone who can speak to your character in terms of discipline, accountability, and academic standing. If you are not homeschooled, we strongly prefer you choose a school guidance counselor to complete this form. The questions we ask in the school administrator recommendation form focus less on your artistic abilities and more on your standing as a responsible member of your learning environment. So don't be too worried if your school counselor has never seen you in the school play. If you're homeschooled, this recommender can be anyone who can speak to your reliability, commitment, character, etc. as long as they're not a family member. This could include staff at an organization where you volunteer, a supervisor for a job, or a leader from a house of worship, and so on. Your second recommender, or your teacher recommender, recommender, should ideally be someone who has worked with you in a classroom or studio environment. If you have a teacher who has worked with you in your art form, we strongly encourage you to select them for this recommendation. If not, 
any teacher who has worked with you, in or outside of the arts, will suffice, as long as they are not a family member. Your teacher recommendation can also be filled out by a private instructor if you have one. Choose a teacher who knows you well and or has worked with you often. Next, students across all nine art forms will respond to two essay prompts. One response will be written and the other will be a video of a verbal response. Students will also respond to some art form specific questions about their experience and interests in their area. Don't be intimidated if we ask whether you've taken a class in your art form but one doesn't exist in your school or isn't accessible to you. We're simply trying to get to know how we're, sim or we're simply trying to get to know you better so we can understand you and your work in the fullest context possible. And then, of course, from there, students are prompted to submit images, videos, and documents specific to your art form's requirements. Again, review the applicant guide to, rev to review what is required for your art form specifically. For some art forms, this is going to be as simple as one or two uploads. For other art forms, you'll need to create multiple short videos. Give yourself plenty of time to gather your materials by reading the applicant guide as soon as possible. And remember, we're super excited to see your artwork and review your application. We know it can be intimida intimidating to submit your work for scoring and judging, but know that we want you to do well and we will be impressed with the ambition, discipline, and courage you've exhibited by submitting an application in the first place. So be sure to review all of your materials before submitting and whatever you do, again, do not wait until the last minute to submit your application. The system will run slow when too many people are submitting at the same time. Give yourself as much time as possible, and remember, just because the application is due on January 10th doesn't mean that you can't turn it in much earlier than that. We'll be hosting a webinar where we go through the application portal step by step on Thursday, October 29th at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Central. We'll also be hosting a series of webinars in November and December where we speak with adjudicators from each art form about what they're looking for in applicants. So again, check out GSA's website and our social media um, you can register for those uh, info sessions now. Registration is open. Okay, so we're getting toward the end of my part of the presentation, and closer to Q&A. Um, so as we start to wrap up, I just want to go through um, an overview again of all of our important dates for GSA applicants. On October 14th, this year's applicant guides will be released. Remember that you can review last year's in the meantime for context. The next day, on October 15th, we're gonna review the contents of an applicant guide during a webinar at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Keep in mind, recordings of the webinars will be made available afterward if you can't join us in real time. On October 29th, we'll host a webinar exploring the application portal, and I'll actually walk us through filling out an application from start to finish. And then the GSA application itself will be available by November 4th. We'll host one webinar per art form from mid-November through early December, where we'll chat with an adjudicator about what they're looking for, um, dates for each of those, like I said, are on our website, as is registration. And then finally, we'll have a last call, open Q&A webinar on December 17th at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. And remember, these webinars are not the only way you can get your questions answered. You can email us as well. <clears throat> Continuing our review, the application is due by end of day, January 10th. Students will learn if they've advanced to the final round on February 19th about one month before the final round of auditions reviews on March 19th and 20th. We'll announce the GSA class of 2021, as well as our arts alternates placed in the wait list on April 16th. And finally, the GSA 21, excuse me, the GSA 2021 summer program will take place June 27th through July 17th, 2021. Okay, so as we start to wrap up here, some final tips. What else can you be doing right now to prepare yourself to apply for GSA? Well, Hopefully these final tips are fun ones. Dive into your art form every chance you can, whether it's taking a class, practicing or sketching or writing at home, or even just researching the work of other artists online. Learn and experience as much as you can, even if it's just on YouTube. And form opinions about what you see and learn. Why do you like or not like a piece? How do you see GSA's criteria and the work of other artists? Who are some artists that you admire? Second, Reflect on why you like engaging in the arts and what kind of artists you want to be, and then get comfortable talking to other people about it. We know it can sometimes be uncomfortable to talk about yourself as an artist, or even just to call yourself an artist, but you've got nothing to lose, I promise. Chat with your family and friends about your art form, your dreams, your artistic future, and how you want to grow. Maybe even ask them about their creative interests as well, even if it's cooking or crafting. 
It's a great way to prepare for your GSA application process, and it can be a wonderful way to deepen your relationships with your friends and your, fa and your family. Throughout all of this, remember that while GSA is a wonderful program, we are not the be all end all. We do not get to determine whether or not you are a good artist or whether you have a future in the arts. The truth is, GSA is harder to get in than we wish it was. We limit our class size to the current size based on capacity and not because we believe there are only that many deserving young artists in the state. Unfortunately, we have to turn away amazing and qualified applicants every year simply because we are limited in our ability to host a certain number of students. But don't let that hold you back. As I said earlier, we hope you'll apply because you believe you deserve an opportunity like this one. If ultimately you aren't accepted into the program, our hope is that you feel proud of putting yourself out there and that you feel more determined and prepared for other opportunities. You are an artist and no one, including GSA, can take that away from you. So if at any time throughout the application process, you start to feel a little bit of self-doubt, starting to have second thoughts or feel down about yourself, we hope that you will remember these next few things. You are enough, you are important, and your potential is limitless. And again, no one can take that away from you. These things are true for you, no matter what. And so I hope that you remember these phrases and that you say them, so, that you say them to yourself often. All right, so don't forget, we're here to answer your questions, right? It's literally our job and to support your ability to put your best foot forward. So you can contact GSA with any kind of questions at gsainfo at kentuckyperformingarts.org. So feel free to reach, us, reach out to us there at any point. Um, I promise there are no scary adults at GSA waiting to judge you. We love chatting with our applicants and it's our pleasure uh, to help you out. And also follow us on, on social media. As, um, you can search our program name to find us on Facebook or our handle on Instagram is KYGSA. So thank you for attending today. Um, now that you're armed with this information, uh, you're well on your way to being the best GSA applicant you can be. Um, so keep in touch, good luck. And as we say at GSA, go forth and make great art. Um, so we're gonna transition to our Q&A now. I'm gonna um, stop sharing my screen. Just give me a second. All right. So again, um, we're going to use the Q&A feature um, on Zoom to answer questions. Um, so if you have put a question in the chat feature by chance, um, um, go ahead and put it in the Q&A feature. So I see we have a lot of questions that you all put in here, which is awesome. So let me just give it. Take a moment to, to review these uh, while you enter any additional questions you might have. <clears throat> Great. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start going through these questions one at a time. What is the acceptance rate for GSA? And I know some of these questions you may have asked before I got to them in the, in the uh, presentation, but I think it's worth repeating. So what is the acceptance rate for GSA? So we currently expect to accept 256 students into the 2021 summer program. That's the size that the summer program has generally been for about, I would say six or seven years. Um, we generally see about 1400 applications for, that, for those 256 spots. Um, so that's where I, I go back to what I said about, you know, the program is, is pretty competitive, um, but we hope that that does not discourage you from applying. Uh, which art form would you recommend for a singer or a songwriter? That's a really good question. Um, I think two art forms that come up for me there are definitely musical theater and vocal music. Uh, again, keep in mind that uh, musical theater is going to be, you know, more Broadway and, and vocal music is going to be more classically based. Um, we don't have a composition program at GSA, although there could certainly be workshops or guest artists who are focusing on composition. Um, and, you know, if you're a songwriter who plays piano or another instrument, you might consider instrumental music as well. Um, but again, you have to choose two, you can, or you can only apply for up to two art forms. Um, you do have to be a sophomore or junior to apply. Uh, so I'm, I'm sorry uh, for our seniors out there. Um, but we do have a great list of other summer arts opportunities that we have available on our website that we can share. 
Do we do fireworks on the 4th? I love the spirit of that question. Um, we do not set off our own personal fireworks, um, but the campus of University of Kentucky is, is pretty close to, to downtown Lexington. Um, so I, I think we uh, can kind of see them if we, if we want to kind of opt in to maybe might have to crook your neck around a building. Um, but we do a lot of fun activities for the 4th of July. We just don't set off fireworks. Um, again, GSA 2021 is taking place next summer, June and July. So uh, a great question about clarifying what I mean when I'm saying you have to be a sophomore or a junior to apply. So in order to apply for GSA 2021, you have to currently be a sophomore or junior, which means when you attend the program next summer, you will be a rising junior or a rising senior. Another question about music competition. I think I addressed that earlier. Um, we do not um, have an art form for music production necessarily. Uh, that could definitely be a part of this, I would say, especially our instrumental music program um, in the past has had some music production or music tech folks, um, you know, maybe visit the program. We may also have some all school pres presenters who focus on that topic, um, but we do not have an art form that um, really focuses on music production. This is a good question about, do we uh, provide feedback to applicants? Uh, and unfortunately, we, we do not. Uh, this is something that we would definitely love to do in the future, um, but due to the administrative uh, just constraints of GSA and, and the, the staff size that we have, um, we are unable to um, process the feedback for that many um, applications and, and provide it to our, our applicants. All right, I think really good question here. If applying for more than one discipline, do I fill out two separate applications? It's a great question. The answer is yes. So when you go into accepted, and again, we'll do more webinars uh, later this fall that cover this topic more. When you go into our application portal, um, you will basically choose uh, which art form you want to apply in, and you can fill out that application, and it will produce an application ID for you, uh, which is a number. And then when you apply for your second art form, um, there's a question on the application that says, is this your second art form application? And so you'll just hit yes. You'll type in your application ID number there and it will link those applications together. Um, and on, on our end, they look like two separate applications. If you have any questions about the, the technology side of that, just reach out to us and we can walk you through it. Is, oh, okay, great question from a percussionist. Is percussion considered one instrument or are the various instruments within percussion considered separate? A percussion is considered one instrument uh, in terms of if you are applying for per percussion, you're applying in, in one art form, basically. So you could apply in percussion and let's say clarinet or percussion and creative writing. And you'll see as you dig into the applicant guide, um, you kind of choose which percussion instruments um you uh want to pr provide materials on um we'll give you some guidelines but you'll see that in the applicant guide let's see i think we've covered most of these um my preferred art form is fashion design is that uh, under a certain category or the design category first off that's awesome um fashion design is, is such a cool field um we don't have a strong focus in the program right now on fashion design per se um, I would say that someone who is interested in fashion design could definitely um, maybe still have interest in our architecture and design um, program. We do, uh, you know, in that program cover concepts of design. Uh, it just may or may not get as a specific of a focus in fashion design, especially um, beyond maybe one or two breakouts. Um, but the design concepts could definitely still be applicable. And uh, we also have a lot of students attend our visual art program who are interested in fashion design. Um, so maybe something for you to consider. Um, the school recommender uh, uh, form, who fills that out? Again, the school administrator uh, reference um, should be a, a guidance counselor. Um, it could be a principal too. Um, we encourage you to use a teacher for that teacher recommendation form. And, and don't get too caught up in someone's, um, I encourage you not get too caught up in someone's job title with those recommendation forms. Again, keep in mind that the school administrator is, we're asking them more about things like attendance, um, and any disciplinary issues, just so we have an awareness of that. And the teacher is going to be someone that we ask more about your um, performance in the classroom. 
Is a pre this is a great question. I get this one all the time. Is there a preference given to high school juniors over sophomores because we accept both sophomores and juniors? Um, we do not have specific ratios that we accept for sophomores and juniors. Um, now, I will say that if we have one spot left in GSA and we've got a junior and a sophomore um, and we just can't choose between them um, for that one spot, then we're probably going to accept that junior and put the sophomore on the alternate list and really, really, really hope that they apply next year. So um, I wouldn't say that there's preference given, um, but we definitely acknowledge that um, juniors are in their last year of eligibility. Will vegan food be provided? That's a great question. Um, the on-campus dining options at the Univers University of Kentucky are wonderful. There are always vegan options. Um, I actually usually eat vegan myself. Um, and I, I eat quite well at GSA. Um, and also, uh, if you have allergies or anything like that, anything like that um, UK's dining options are extremely, extremely amenable. Um, so generally, everyone eats quite well while, while we're there. Um, an athletic coach could serve as a recommender. Thank you for that question, most certainly. Uh, would we consider drag or makeup as visual art? Well, that's a really good question. I love that question. Um, I, I would encourage you um, to, if you're asking this question really about anything, like is this piece that I want to submit or this example of my work um, applicable? Does GSA consider this art? Uh, I would encourage you to read the guidelines and read the criteria. And if you, as an artist and as the creator of that work, determine that it fits within the guidelines and you're able to explain how and you think it is the best way to show your work in the spirit of the criteria which again the criteria is what you're being scored on go for it you may be asked to explain like oh this is a really unique choice why did you choose to add this to your portfolio um you know how does the you know why does this uh, seem like a strong piece for you in terms of the criteria that we've given you um but just think about why that is so that absolutely could be um considered uh, the portfolio piece. And you'll see guidelines within the applicant guide um, uh, for, you know, portfolio pieces that you have um, more control over. We, we ask for like a, a self-portrait, a landscape, um, and so on. There are a few pieces that we do ask you have, but then there's part of your portfolio that is really up to you. What, what kind of design does architecture and design cover? It's a great question. Um, I will uh, be very upfront that um, my architecture design faculty might uh, have a, a stronger answer to that. So I really encourage um, you to attend the architecture and design webinar that we do later this fall. Um, but um, architecture and design does not, the way, the way I describe it, it is not just designing houses, right? Um, it really covers the concept of design, how we use space, how we create, um, you know, items um, that are uh, amenable to the human experience. So um, it's a little bit more abstract, I think, in that way than maybe our visual art program. But I really encourage you to um, attend the session later this fall with our art, architecture and design um, adjudicator. How many band people do you usually accept? Um, it's a great question. Uh, we, um, um, we have 50 students in our instrumental music program. Again, it is a chamber music based program. Um, so there's no band or orchestra necessarily. We do have a jazz band. So every year we're going to ex uh, ex accept a different um, amount of various instruments. Like for instance, and I'm just pulling an instrument out of thin air right now, there might be one year where we don't have a viola, um, but there might be another year where we have three. So we, but we will always have, you know, piano, strings, percussion, um, brass, and, and so on. And woodwinds. This recording will be posted on our website and on our social media. Um, typically, how many sophomores are accepted into the program? Again, it's, it's hard to say. I would say roughly in most years, it's approximately a third of the summer program ends up being sophomores. Um, but that is not um, guaranteed. Um, a couple questions about, about dorms. So um, keep in mind that um, we, uh, we are still kind of monitoring the situation with COVID-19. Um, so we don't necessarily have our, our policies in place that if we're going to be in person, what will the dorm situation look like? It could very well be different than what we're used to. 
Um, UK is, of course, um, getting some experience with that this year that we can learn from. Um, so uh, we don't have those um, just yet. Um, and again, you heard me mention um, for non-binary and transgender students, we uh, work with them to kind of customize their housing experience. Um, so um, if a student has indicated to us that um, they are non-binary or transgender, we just reach out to them and we have a conversation and we figure out um, what um, the best situation is for that individual. Um, let's see, if, if you are interested in jazz, we do have a jazz um, band in our instrumental music program, so you, that there's certainly a place for you at GSA. I love all these great questions. You all have so many questions, which is just absolutely wonderful. Um, if you and a friend get accepted, can you request a room together? No, you cannot. Um, we uh, specifically try to house you with someone that you've not met before, because GSA is all about exchange. So we really want your roommate to be from another art form and another part of the state. Um, so that can really augment your ability to learn more about Kentucky and more about the arts. If you were an alternate last year, does that increase your chances of being accepted this year? Um, we don't have any kind of set policy on um, you know, alternates starting out with uh, you know, more points than other applicants necessarily. It is a blank slate. Uh, we consider all applicants this year, um, uh, so, you know, starting from the same place and the same point. Um, but if you were an alternate last year, that means that you did really well on the process. So um, I would walk into this year's application process with a lot of confidence. Um, but it does not necessarily mean that, you know, statistically, you're more likely to get into the program. Thank you for that question. Oh, great question. Can you participate in GSA after both your sophomore and junior years or only once? Um, unfortunately, you can only attend GSA once. So if you're accepted as a sophomore, um, you are not eligible to apply um, the following year. And that's just because of the program um, with this many limited spots, we really want to maximize our ability to deliver to as many students as possible. Um, if you do film and photography, do you have to bring a camera? Or a, does, and if so, does it have to be a great camera? This applies to a lot of art forms with supplies. Um, there are some art forms where, you know, you may be asked to bring equipment or supplies um, if you have it. Um, if you don't, it's fine. It will be provided. <clears throat> and we have a um, almost all of our supplies generally are provided, especially in, in the visual arts. So um, if you don't have a camera or if you have a camera, you don't think it's great, don't worry about it. Okay, I'm just continuing to go through these questions here. <laughs> Again, um, no letters of recommendation. Um, you don't have to get a letter written for you and then submit it. What will, what will happen in the application is you will go online, you will identify who the, your recommenders are just by their name and their email address. You'll click a button and then we send the form to them to fill out and they send it back to us. And if they forget to send it to us, we can see that and then we can remind them. Film and photography, how much does it focus on film versus photography? It's a pretty evenly split, actually. So you'll be spending your time um, creating a portfolio of photography while you're there and also working in small teams to create a short film. We do, uh, there's a question about, um, do we ever ask for medical information? And when students are accepted into the program, uh, we go through an extensive paperwork process. Um, so uh, again, going back to just valuing everyone's safety, mental, physical, emotional health and well-being, um, we definitely make sure that we're aware of um, you know, any physical health issues or anything like that um, that we need to be aware of, prepared for, or accommodate. Um, someone asked a, a popular question, what is the most competitive art form? Um, I wish I could tell you that the secret that there's a one art form that's easier to get into than another, um, but you might recall that I said um, we really try to base those class sizes on the ratio of applicants we see. So roughly speaking, <clears throat> there's really no art form that's more competitive than the other. Um, and of course it changes every year in terms of how many applicants we see for which art form. If you apply for two art forms, you, are, you can only attend GSA for one. 
So um, we do every year have a small handful of applicants who um, are accepted in two art forms. And what happens in that situation is that we call them, we congratulate them, and then we ask them to select an art form of focus at GSA. Let's see here. All right, we're getting some specific questions about um, specific art forms. Um, visual arts, generally you're gonna be submitting a portfolio of about nine pieces, I think. Um, there's gonna be a lot more detail about that in the applicant guide, so I'll direct you there. Um, creative writing, uh, you submit a manuscript and it is in one specific genre. Um, you get to choose what genre it is, but again, I'll defer you to the applicant guide. And a great question about um, while you're at the program, will you be able to see your friends and family? Um, even if they live close to campus, unfortunately not. We, we have a, um, a no visitation policy and that's really just because we're so busy <laughs> the whole time. Um, and it's really, um, you know, that, that policy is in place just allow us to keep focus. Uh, and also, you know, your family may live around the corner, but your roommates might not. They might be really homesick. So we all just try to, um, you know, create that community um, internally for three weeks. And sometimes it's a little difficult, we understand, um, but uh, you will see your family and friends in the final day. If, we, if I'm accepted for 2021 um, and it goes virtual, can we wait until 2022? I will say we have never had um, deferred acceptance at GSA, um, but again, keeping with the theme of we don't know what's gonna happen this year yet, um, uh, you know, we'll definitely, um, the, that idea is always in our mind, but I just can't confirm that right now, unfortunately. So a couple questions about essays. Um, so there are two essay prompts that you will have to fill out regardless of what art form you apply for. So there's a written essay and a video essay. Um, and what those prompts are will be announced with the applicant guides. So those essay prompts will be in the applicant guides when they're announced on October 14th. Um, we'll give you a hint, they're different from last year's. Um, so what are we looking for in those responses? That's a really good question. Um, and I can tell you uh, the best thing to do in your responses is just to be authentic. Um, don't worry about telling us what you think we want to hear and just let us get a sense of your personality. You know, it doesn't mean you have to, you know, do something wild or crazy, um, but just let us get a sense of who you are. Um, because what we don't want to see is the same kind of stock answer from everyone with like no sense of, of what's important to them. I love who um, this question, are we allowed to bring gaming systems like an Xbox? Um, no, I don't believe we allow that, um, but there's plenty to do in the dorm, I promise. I, I might have to double check that though. If you're a dance applicant, not doing point will not hurt your chances of getting in. Um, so dancers um, only submit point work um, if it's something that you feel um, you know capable of and, and that you're strong in. Um, again, more information about that in the in the dance applicant guide. But every year we have students accepted who um, did not submit point work in their dance application. It is optional. Again, GSA is just on one campus, the University of Kentucky. I see, um, again, I'm, there's, there's so many good questions that I'm kind of going to skip over some of the very specific art form questions about like what, can I, what will I study at this specific art form. Really encourage you to check out um, the uh, art form specific webinars in November and December. I'm really excited about the questions you all are asking. Let's see. How many people do not show up? Every year we have a, a small group of students, um, number changes who decide to go to another program or, or do something else with their summer. Um, so that's hard to predict, but it does happen every year. Oh, I love this question. Are the alumni scholarships Kentucky um, exclusive? No, we offer, or the scholarships that GSA alumni are eligible for um, are for schools both inside and outside of Kentucky. And again, those scholarships uh, are listed on the alumni section of our website, KentuckyGSA.org. Do we have a chance to go off campus during the day or visit and explore parts of campus we're on? 
Um, so again, I'll remind you that um, you're basically in studio from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, so you're kind of always with your, your art firm group or your RA group. Um, however, I will say that students are never um, anywhere without an adult present, that being an RA or your faculty. Um, so you may have a chance to explore campus, it just might not necessarily be on your own. Again, those teacher recommendation forms, um, if you have a teacher who knows you in the art form that you're applying for, strongly encourage you to um, use that person. Um, someone asked if you can submit shared work as one of your pieces. Again, check out the applicant guide. Um, there are definitely art forms, like for instance, film, where you may have played a certain role in the work you're submitting, and we provide you with an opportunity to just explain that. Again, just a reminder for our instrumental music program, we do not have a set number of any specific instrument. And again, the range of class sizes. Um, our smallest classes are film and photography and architecture and design. Those are each about 12 students. Our largest is instrumental music. And all the others um, generally are gonna be 20 something to 30 something. Um, so creative writing is 28, dance is 24, drama is 34, musical theater is 26, visual art is 36, and vocal music is 33. And again, instrumental music is 50, architecture and design is 13, and film and photo is 12. Really happy I had that post-it note to my right. You can apply as a sophomore and a junior, just you can't attend twice. Um, the criteria that you will see in the applicant guide, um, which again is what you're being scored on, um, it is not weighted. Uh, so uh, that doesn't mean that like one pizza criteria we're scoring like 10% of your, your final score on. Um, again, we consider all of those really um, together and in context. Um, so uh, just know that. And then someone asked, is there an example of a successful visual art portfolio has looked like historically? And the answer to that question is no, um, because there's no one right way or, uh, to submit your application or there's no one right um, GSA visual art application. So I know that can, kind of be frustrating when you're trying to figure out like, what should this look like and what should I be submitting? But again, I encourage you to look at the application guidelines and the criteria and just think about what, what of your work uh, meets that the best, describes you best in the, in the terms of that criteria, because that's what the adjudicator, adjudicators are gonna be looking for in your work. Um, what about dance jazz? Um, there may be um, you know, a, a jazz class or two in the dance program, that depends, but our dance program is based in ballet, modern, and choreography or composition. Someone asked if you can reuse the same essay as last year. Um, uh, well, you could, but like I said earlier, this essay prompts are changing. Although I encourage you to update it. You've probably learned new things in the past year, new perspectives. Okay, I think we're getting to some questions I've already answered. Oh, our, our faculty, the GSA faculty, come from all over the place. So they are not just UK faculty, although we do have some faculty from our host campus, the University of Kentucky. Um, a lot of our faculty live in Kentucky. Some of them live outside of Kentucky, but by some way, shape, or form, have a connection um, to Kentucky. So our faculty really um, come from all over the place. Really, really awesome group of people. You can use the same people for recommendations as you did last year if you applied. It's not a problem. If you applied last year, you can use the same recommenders. They will fill out a new recommendation for you though. Um, this is a really great question. So, uh, and I'll address it by just making a kind of blanket, blanket statement about the GSA application. Um, so it's an online application, which means you're gonna be submitting um, photos or videos, right? For all of you, even creative writers will have to submit a video of themselves responding to an essay. A smartphone, totally fine. Do not go out and hire a professional video team, 
um, to record your, your uh, application materials. Um, you know, if you have a, a, a fancier camera that you want to use, by all means, go ahead. Um, so definitely always present yourself as best you can, but just know that we are not expecting professional level um, videos or photography of your work. Um, so just try to present yourself and your work as best you can with what you have. <clears throat> Again, a lot of really great questions specifically about your art form, so I really encourage you um, to take a look at the applicant guide. Again, remember, you can go ahead and look through last year's if you want. The vast majority of that information is going to be the same this year. Um, you can email us very specific questions um, because I, I, I'm gathering we just won't have time to get to all of them today. Um, and you can also attend that webinar with the specific art form of focus later this year in November or December. GSA 2021 is I think I said earlier, June 27th through July 17th of 2021. If you forget to pack something, you can't have someone drop it off to you. That's not a problem. We have parents drop off care packages all the time. They just hand those off to the residential life staff. And then we get to the student. Um, someone asked, could you elaborate about the worship days? So if a student uh, wants to worship uh, in a house of worship while they're at GSA, uh, that is part of your pre-programmed paperwork, so we just figure out, um, you know, what religion or denomination um, you're looking at and, and when that um, religion worships, and uh, we arrange for GSA staff to um, transport you to that house of worship, um, as long as it exists in the Lexington area. You can bring a Polaroid camera, and you don't have to leave it in your room, actually. You can bring disposable, we have students bring disposable cameras all the time. You can definitely bring card games to play with your roommates. Oh, you guys are so ready to have fun in the dorm. I love it. Yes, you can bring a musical instrument to use during free time, even if you don't do instrumental music. One of my favorite things is watching through, um, it was walking through rather, uh, the yard outside of the residential hall and hearing all the music and laughter that's happening. Um, so absolutely, we also have a talent show, a couple talent shows every year, and um, very often it's a great way for students to showcase um, an art form other than what they're focusing on at GSA. Um, there is a curfew. Um, I can't, uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember the exactness of it right now, but I, you know, we're back in the dorm by 10. I think we're on our floors around 11, um, and lights out definitely by midnight, not before. Um, we got some great questions about mental health and just what kind of what kind of support we have for mental health. Um, we understand that uh, experience like this where it's really intense and you know we're away from home for three weeks um, can can be really like I said intense. Um, so we do have a mental health counselor on hand 24/7. Um, that person has also trained all of our faculty and staff. Um, so we're very responsive to any mental health issues that might come up. Um, you know regardless of what that looks like. Um, and again, we, we want everyone to feel comfortable and, and safe at GSA. We want this to be a very safe space. How many students that go to GSA uh, go on to study their art form in college? That's a really good question. Um, I would say, pulling some stats on the back of my head, that's generally going to be um, over half, but not all. And something that's really uh, important to, to that, that is really important to GSA is that we acknowledge that um, just because you go to GSA um, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to grow up to be a, a professional artist. We want you to know that you can be a professional artist, that it's um, uh, an actual viable career that you can have. Uh, you can even have it in Kentucky. There are lots of professional artists making their living in Kentucky and it's a wonderful thing. Um, but it's okay if you would rather go into education or business or science because your creativity is going to serve you really well no matter what field you go into. Um, so if uh, you're interested in applying to GSA, but you don't know if you want to grow up to be a professional artist, that's totally cool. I hope you'll, you'll, you'll still apply because that's totally valid. And also, our applicants are in 10th and 11th grade. And you may, I know when I was that age, I kind of felt like I had to feel like I knew what I was doing with the rest of my life, and you do not. So um, at GSA, you know, we, we don't expect you to know what you're going to be when you grow up necessarily, although we certainly would love to hear about your aspirations. 
you can always email us with your questions, GSA info at Kentucky, uh, Kentucky Performing Arts .org. Um, Again, when you registered for this uh, webinar, you should have gotten an email with that email address in there, but please email us with your questions. We would love um, to ask you or to talk to you about them. I've heard that two people from the same school cannot get into the same program. Is this true? That is not true. Two people from the same school could definitely be accepted into the same art form. Will laundry supplies be supplied? Love that question. Thinking about the laundry. Um, no, you do have to bring your own detergent and uh, dryer sheets and all those fun things. Um, although, again, if you end up running out or forget it at home, you can either have a parent drop it off to you or ship it to you, or we're not going to let you go without doing your laundry. So we'll figure something out. I promise. <laughs> We've got your back. Um, someone asked if the adjudicators choosing the GSA class are also faculty in that art form. Um, most of the time, very often, we try to make our adjudicators faculty in that art form. Our faculty are not always available, um, so it's not guaranteed or 100%, um, but generally speaking, the people scoring your application are going to be um, part of the faculty for your art form. There are also plenty of faculty at the summer program who are not adjudicators um, just because they all don't participate in that process. <clears throat> yes, we do have, um, that's a great question. We definitely have, um, you know, any kind of supplies that someone might need for, um, you know, like for instance, I've gotten this question, do we have female products that can be used in case of emergencies? We do. Um, but we all, but the one thing to consider on the other side of that is that, you know, things like Tylenol or medication, we do not provide, just so you know. You do bring bedding, you do not bring cars. Um, if you have to park a car on campus, um, we can work that out, but um, we, we prefer students to get dropped off. The mental um, health professional is provided free of charge to students. Um, currently, we do not store prescribed medications. Um, so students are responsible for taking their own medicine. Thank you for that question. So a, a clarifying question about the um, scholarships. The scholarships are provided by the colleges themselves. Um, so um, the, the, the GSA does not actually provide that money or um, the, the scholarship ourselves, we do not distribute that money to, to you. Um, the schools have deemed GSA alumni eligible for specific scholarships. So you will be in touch with that school um, through, through the application process about applying to that scholarships. For some of them, uh, for some of the scholarships, you do have to major in your art form, for others you don't. Some of those scholarships are gonna be full rides, some of them are gonna be for a couple thousand dollars. So every school has different um, qualifications, different eligibility requirements. Uh, and again, those are listed, the details of those on our website, in the alumni section of KentuckyGSA.org. Um, so I encourage you to check those out. We definitely provide you with a list of what to bring and, and what not to bring. Um, so uh, don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> I love this question. Um, so, you know, there's someone who, is asking, you know, is raw talent weighted more than originality or, or vice versa? It's a great question, very fair question. Um, and it's very difficult to say because every student is very different. Um, I think we will never accept someone who doesn't have both of those things. Um, but, you know, raw talent in some art forms, you know, some students have had access to classes all, all their life and, and other students haven't, and that's okay. So what raw talent looks like for someone who's maybe had classes all their life versus someone who hasn't, um, that may look different. So we wanna address that in context. Um, and so originality is also very important. Um, so I would look at our criteria as a list of things that we're, we're looking for comprehensively from a student, um, but just know that uh, if you feel like you have not 
um, had a chance to really um, develop the best technical skill in your art form possible. Um, but don't worry too much about that uh, because we're really interested in your originality, um, all those other criteria. So check out the criteria and spend some time with those. The webinar on October 15th is at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Central. You can uh, register for that on our website. We'll also make a Facebook event about it. Almost there, okay. Um, when you get in, uh, we what we do on April 16th is we'll post a list of accepted students and alternates. Um, so uh, if, if you do not get in, we send you a message to the application portal. Um, but we don't like post a list of, of students who are not accepted unless you're an alternate. Okay, so lots of uh, a good, good questions there. Thank you all so much. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop our Q&A at this point. We've gotten to the bottom of them. Um, I did my best certainly to answer all that I could. Um, again, a lot of questions about art form specific requirements. I'll direct you to the applicant guide or to email, emailing us those specific questions and the webinars of the specific art forms later this year. Uh, later this fall. Also a lot of questions about what to bring to the dorm, which I absolutely love. One of the coolest things about GSA is that we're all learning what it's like to live in a dorm for the first time, right? Um, so just know that that information will be provided um, at some point. But if you have more specific questions that we weren't able to get to today, um, again, reach out to us um, via email. Go to our website and check out that list of info sessions. If you go to KentuckyGSA.org, one of the first things you'll see is, are you interested in applying? You click through that section, which will take you to the prospective student section, and you can click on the schedule for info sessions and register there. And just in this process, remember we're here for you. Uh, we already think you're awesome, uh, as just as being young artists. So thank you all so much for joining us today. Just a reminder to take the survey that will pop up um, after uh, we end the webinar here. So it should pop up, and you should also receive it via email. So. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, we look forward to supporting you for your GSA application and we'll talk soon. Go forth and make great art in the meantime.